video talking about Shoka Conroy, I mentioned how I was completely done talking about the situation, and that's because at the time when it was happening a few months ago, I think almost three months ago at this point, I thought more information was going to come out about him being this and that, and et cetera, et cetera, him being weird, him doing this, him doing that, and at that point, I had just had enough. I didn't want to talk about it anymore because I, f I felt that the point was already coming across pretty clearly that he was saying and acting very weird and doing very weird things with people, and it just, it just didn't seem right to go ahead and continue talking about the situation any longer. He had already been, like, put into, like, a mental institution. He had went to the hospital a few times. That's what was being reported at the time. But at that point, I was just done. I just didn't want to talk about it anymore. And to be perfectly frank, I didn't even think that Chuka Convo was going to end up returning, whether or not he was going to come out of the psych ward anytime soon or he was going to get out of the hospital anytime soon. I didn't think he was going to end up coming back. I thought that he was going to just completely disappear off the internet completely and we were never going to hear or see from him ever again. That was until about almost 24 hours ago at the time of when i'm recording this it's about 18 hours ago when he finally finally released a series of tweets onto his twitter account uh, or his ex account and he lays everything out on the table everything revolving around uh Masai, lady emily and the biggest one for me especially because this was the video where i said that this was career ending uh the situation with him and lolly and that was the biggest situation that i thought that happened during everything that was going on he also gives some more context as to what happened to him like during that time period when he was talking with lolly and visiting the medical the mental ward and the psych ward and all that and how he's been doing and how he's going to progress on forward into the future uh, after all this is said and done with and I read everything last night. I don't want to read everything out because it's a lot. If you want to see someone read everything out, I'm pretty sure Bo Blacks will probably read everything out. Uh, Omni did a live stream. Uh, so if you want to see a live stream of someone reading this live and their like firsthand reaction of reading everything, go and check out Omni's live stream. He, he, he reacted to everything. Uh, I'm going to basically give you the Cliff Notes version of this and just basically give you my thoughts and what I was thinking reading all of this. So obviously the tweet thread starts out with him also leaving a Google Docs link. So if you were to read this in a Google Docs, that's up to you. But basically he just says hello and that he's back and that he's going to go ahead and just give some context about some misconceptions that were revealed over the course of the last couple of months that he had been away. And he starts off with the information with Masai. And him and Masai were actually 10 years ago dating and they were actually engaged to be married. But it fell apart three years ago, and anything that happened between the two of them in videos from like 10 or so years ago, they were already engaged, they were together, they were a couple, and if there was anything that involved around them being like uncomfortable with one another or Masai being uncomfortable with him, that was probably just misconstrued in a specific way, or maybe it's just him not understanding any of, his, any of her social cues because he does have autism and he even does explain in the text messages or the or in the google docs that he's not going to use that as a defense because it isn't a defense but that is something that definitely doesn't help as well as a lot of other like mental health issues that he has that he explains way later uh in this whole thread on on twitter but they were engaged to be married but they had a falling out they had a really difficult breakup he didn't handle it very well and he took it uh, like very very bad and they don't want anything to do with each other. And I think that's perfectly fine. If they don't want to have anything to do with each other, that's just what it is. And we should just leave it at that. Uh, the biggest thing that happened and that started this whole thing was in regards to Lady Emily, because she was the one that broke out this whole thing of him being a creep and a weirdo and that he was like super into feet and that he was trying to get pictures of her feet or her wearing the shoes that he gave her and yada yada, all that dumb fucking bullshit and i'm sort of fuzzy on like how my thoughts were like at the time and how they were changing as things continued to keep going on but i did rewatch my first video talking about it and my general consensus when this first came out was that this should have been handled privately and that i didn't think that chuka conroy was really all that much of a big weirdo and that he just so he just so happened to have a foot fetish right and he also just so happens to also do 
sort of exotic, like, lewd roleplay. And is that weird? I mean, it really shouldn't be considered weird. That's just something that people do. That's just a kink that some people have. And I think that shouldn't have been such a big deal. And he shows text messages and Discord screenshots of the two being completely comfortable with one another and putting a lot more context to the fact that they were completely comfortable with one another. They were talking to each other as if they had been friends for a very long time and they had very normal conversations. And that the only reason that he even gave her the shoes to begin with was not because he wanted to see her feet, but because she had mentioned that her old pair of shoes had already gotten completely destroyed and she needed a new one and being the friend that he is he thought that he was going to do the nice thing and just gift her a new pair of shoes that she had needed and that's all that's all he really did and the screenshots and the messages that they shared with each other on discord show that they were friends they were completely neutral with one another as friends and there didn't seem to be any ill will between either of them but eventually she just ended up stopped messaging him and just ghosted him completely. And the way that he interpreted that was that something was wrong and that he just wanted to know what was going on. And that's why he was so persistent with spamming messages towards her. And he even acknowledges that that wasn't the right thing to do in the Google Docs and in the tweet thread. He acknowledges that that wasn't the proper behavior to have. But the only reason why he behaved that way was because he thought that something was wrong and he freaked out. And honestly, I could kind of relate because sometimes I kind of do that as well in my own personal life whenever or at least i used to do that a long time ago when i was younger because back then i didn't really have too many friends and whenever someone would just not message me for an extended period of time i freaked out and i didn't know if it was because they thought a particular way about me or because they didn't like me anymore or they didn't want to be my friend and so my instinct reaction to do at the time when i was younger was to just to start spamming the messages trying to get their attention but obviously that didn't work and that wasn't the proper behavior since then i I like to think that I don't do that anymore, but I can totally understand why he started doing this when they were talking with each other, and I feel really bad for him. I, I kind of can understand the position that he was in, and that's that's messed up. And ultimately, I think this whole thing regarding Lady Emily, I think just points to her being the one in the wrong, and it sort of just puts things into the perspective that maybe she just wanted to ruin his career or just put him in a bad light or give him like some terrible reputation for whatever reason because this all started because she saw a reddit thread of people talking positively about him and that's basically it i don't know what instigated her to suddenly start ba bad mouthing him like this or whatever but end of the day though regardless i think lady emily was in the wrong in this in this situation regarding her specifically i think she did something really terrible i think she tried to ruin his reputation for no actual good reason and i i feel horrible that this, this even started out with her to begin with and he does ultimately still apologize to her he still feels really bad that he made her feel uncomfortable or feel any particular negative way and that I guess just speaks true to his character that he did feel really bad for however way that he acted even if he didn't mean to like act that way truthfully i feel terrible for him but the next situation like i said is the biggest situation because this is the one that i titled was going to be his career ending event uh which a lot of people in that video gave me a lot of shit for for titling it that and honestly now that i'm like i've read everything and that everything is all put into perspective uh, yeah, I, I, I feel genuinely fucking terrible for the videos that I posted talking about this and how I, like, spoke in them and how I titled the videos. I feel genuinely awful, and I think what also bothers me now is the fact that people, like, are saying that I don't care and that I wanted him to be a terrible guy. I didn't want him to be a terrible guy at all. And reading everything and reading all the messages, he definitely isn't, because... This was like 14 years ago. Back in 2010, he was 19 years old. He's not a groomer. He's not a pedophile, right? He just, at the time, like back then, just crude and like dirty humor, just at the time was just something, and edgy humor, was just something that people did. And honestly, I think that's just something that I forgot and a lot of other people forgot. Like back then, just joking about pedophilia was something that people just did. Because people thought that it was funny. Like, like, Pedo Bear, and he, like, talks about how, like, one of the things that he said in the messages, like, I'm going to R-word you, was in reference to a video of a guy screaming at his cat for whatever weird reason, and that just was popular at the time. It was a popular video at the time, and people were quoting it, and just, it really kind of just sort of put things into perspective that he was just a young guy, still, like, experiencing the world, and even back then, he had, like, 
certain like mental health issues that he hadn't even realized he had at the time and he just didn't understand this and that and on top of like the autism and him being on the spectrum and everything it it really just all put things into perspective of like how things actually were and to the people that were also leaving comments to that, that lolly and her messages and what like what she released herself wasn't actually uh real like he even shows the messages that she had like released out herself that those are real messages and he doesn't try to pretend like those aren't real messages because they are real chats between the two of them for, from over a decade ago. He releases more chat logs of the two of them talking to each other after 10 years of not speaking with each other because he also mentions and explains that after she started getting, getting really raunchy and started getting into really dirty topics and talking about very sexual things, like just on her end, she was the one instigating that and she wasn't the one instigating, or he wasn't the one instigating that, she was. And also the fact that she also had sent something very lewd and crude in the mail because they had gotten each other's messages she sends him very some, something very inappropriate and that was when he started to distance himself from her and for, since then they hadn't talked to each other for a very long time and so years later they had met each other at a con and she came up to him once again they became friends again they started talking on discord and then he releases discord messages of the two of them talking and he explains at the time of like how she was and how her behavior was and why he started distancing, distancing himself from her and how she was at 14 and she even then explains in the chat logs on discord that the whole reason why she was even acting like that to begin with was because she was trying to have sex with him she was trying to coerce him into having sex with him or just coerce any older man to have sex with her at all that's just something that she was trying to do back in the day and she even says thankfully and unfortunately that that never happened but that's what she was trying to do with emil that's what she was trying to accomplish and she reveals this in discord messages you're Hopefully seeing some of the messages on screen. I'm going to I'm going to show you the chat logs, but I'm not going to show you really what what everything is being said because it's just a lot. R regardless, he shows a lot of chat logs, a lot of messages, explains a lot of things with proper context of what was going on at the time and how he was thinking. He even has this whole thread or a specific tweet of messages or, or or text box of him explaining what he was thinking and how he was acting at the time when he was 19 years old and just a lot of things were really put into perspective and I just I felt terrible reading all of this because he explains how he went to the doctors and like to the hospital and the mental ward and how they properly diagnosed him with certain mental illnesses and how he has to start taking medicine and then he even had to go to the hospital at one point because he had hemorrhaging like internal bleeding inside of his body and just reading all of this reading all the messages him giving context to everything and just putting everything into perspective of like an, un an understanding of the situation it really made things made sense and i genuinely felt so bad reading this i felt so bad for the videos that i had posted and just i'm I'm repeating myself i acknowledge that i'm repeating myself but just i i felt so genuinely awful i felt like like after reading everything i felt like i demonized this guy without really knowing like who he was or what he was thinking at the time or just who just just everything i feel like i didn't actually know everything of what was going on and just like i didn't actually know who he was and yet i i felt like through my videos I demonized him when he didn't deserve to be demonized. He didn't deserve to be painted as some terrible, horrible human being when that's simply just who he wasn't. He wasn't this awful human being. He just was a guy that had a lot of like mental issues that were unresolved that he's thankfully now trying to get resolved and he's a lot better than what he was before. But regardless of that, I... I made him out to be something that he wasn't, and I feel like I did that through my videos, and I am right now, right here, like, genuinely apologizing to Emil, Chugga Conroy, if I at all, like, helped in the way of spreading this message of him being a terrible person, I... I'm so sorry. I feel so genuinely terrible, and to the people in the comments who are gonna say, oh, you don't really feel bad, at this you don't know how I am. You don't know how I feel. You don't understand how, how I feel in the situation and my involvement. Even though it wasn't directly with Chugga Conroy, indirectly with the videos, I 
I feel terrible. I really do. I I I feel for Emil. I feel I I really do. It put a lot of things in perspective. It made me even reflect on some of the things that I said and how I acted like like ten years ago and how I was. And yeah, I just I just I feel awful. I really do. Uh, that's all I really want to say. I don't I don't want to keep this video going on for too much longer because I, I just I wanted to put this out there that I think Emil isn't a bad guy. I think he just had a lot of mental issues that were unresolved and thankfully now he's trying to get them resolved. He's trying to do the right thing and he even says himself in all the messages and the text boxes and the tweet thread and the Google Docs he's not going to make these same mistakes again and whether in regards that he's going to end up returning to content creation he even says himself that he doesn't think that he's going to end up returning to that. He does, he's not sure if that's something that he even wants to do anymore. And that's unfortunate. And that's going to be unfortunate for a lot of people who are still fans of him and still believed in him. And to the people that were fans of him and stuck by him, I mean, y'all, the real MVPs at the end of the day, but the real ones and the real people who are the absolute goats in his life are his best friend, Nintendo Capri's son, or Tim, and his current girlfriend. And they did a lot for him. And they, like, Emil deserves everything right he deserves the best and i hope that he does get the best i hope that things get better for him and for people in his life because they they didn't deserve this and i i feel terrible and i'm so sorry i'm so sorry i just yeah that's pretty much it uh leave a like if you want subscribe if you want that's not the point just go and support chucka conroy go and give support to emil because he absolutely deserves it that's the main important thing that people should be doing right now. Don't focus on the video. Don't focus on, on me or my videos. Just go and support Emil because he deserves it. Uh, yeah, that's it. I'll see you guys in the next one. I'm out. Peace. Drop that